Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about programming programming robot for uh, line following and then identifying various junctions uh, among all the eight possible paths that we have seen. So for that, let us first of all uh, get into the possible paths and where do the sensors actually fall uh, on these various paths. So to begin with, we have uh, the end node where our x and y axis sensors are going to follow something like this so the cross markings whichever i'm showing you on the screen are the sensors which will be falling uh, in these positions whenever uh, we roll our robot on the surface of our bridge so whenever our sensors x and y sensors are uh, falling in a white surface except the extreme left and the extreme right sensors which will be giving us one so wherever we have the sensors uh, on black they are going to give us one whereas all the remaining things uh, are, are going to give us zero so just imagine uh, here i have shown initially the placement of the sensors and later on i'll be showing uh, them in the form of 1 and 0. So our exact placement of sensors is something like this on our board. That is we have two sensors vertically placed and then two more right sensors like this and two more left sensors like this. So this is the architecture of our sensor board. This is how our sensors look. So with this perspective this is what happens for an end. Similarly for a T uh, to identify whether uh, we have reached a junction which is really T or not, we need to identify the sensor placement. So for that, we need to have this sensor, uh, which is on the topmost side, needs to be on the white surface. The bottom sensor needs to be on the black, whereas rightmost and leftmost sensor needs to be on the black surface once again. So this is how a T can be recognized. Similarly, for a U-turn, uh, we are going to either get everything on white, which is meaning that we need to take a U-turn here. So that's about U-turn. Similarly, for a cross, the things are very simple. Every sensor is going to give you a logic one reading. So that's how a cross is identified. So that whenever each of the sensors give us uh, or exhibit a one, it's a meaning that we have encountered a cross. Similarly, when we have a cross on the upper sensor, cross uh, of black on the lower sensor, and extreme left sensors are on black surface and extreme right are on white surface. This is how left can be recognized. Similarly, we have this one for a right condition and as you can see there is a very slight difference between this one and this one so you need to program uh, your microcontroller in a very wise manner so that you identify exactly uh, what's happening in the back end and what exact junction your robot has encountered Similarly, for this one, we have extreme left on black, Y sensors on black, extreme right sensors on white. So if you observe all these sensors, it's very evident that all of these sensor junctions, I mean the sensor junctions, are unique in nature. So just to eliminate a cross, uh, getting confused with an end, we have replaced it with uh, center white position as you are able to see here. So this is very important. So let's move ahead and identify how to program this by using an Arduino IDE. Uh, this is what we have seen yesterday. Let me quickly take you through the symptoms of what a program looks like. Now each and every sensor position that we have currently drawn on these eight junctions 
the same are to be integrated in a C language. So this can be pretty easily done by, uh, with the help of a if condition. So let's uh, write a simple program by using Arduino IDE for any of these um, junctions and then I'll program it on the rest of the things and then I'll be directly showing you the things. So of course we need to uh, put that under loop but before that we need to check for a perfect position where we can actually write a code. So this is where we have a for loop in the previous iteration or the previous video. So for time being I'll be simply removing this So here onwards, we are ready to write the code. So for this, uh, what we need is a simple if condition. So now this is very important. If you look at the placement, this is the placement of our sensors. Uh, the leftmost, the leftmost sensors uh, are numbered from 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So this is the position of uh, the sensors. I mean, these numbers are actually inherited from the last six ordinal digital pins, which we sometimes refer as A0 to A5. So remembering these sensor positions uh, from top side, if you look uh, your robot placed on a ground surface, then from left towards right, uh, you can go in an incremental approach like 14, 15, 16, 17, the top one is 17, bottom one is 16, and then uh, 18 and 19. So that's how we name all of our sensors. So for instance, if you are about to write a condition for uh, the right T, then I'll be simply writing a condition like 14 and 15 needs to be zero, whereas 16, 17, 18, and 19 needs to be one. So whenever this condition is attained, it's a meaning that a right T junction has been uh, encountered by your robot. So let me first of all write a small condition for a forward condition. So forward condition would be having neither of this. So it's meaning that whenever your center two sensors or simply the y axis sensors fall on black line whereas leftmost and rightmost sensors in uh, I mean two sensors on both the sides fall on white surface it's meaning that you are about to uh, simply follow a line so we need to first of all write a condition for that one so it will be something like this so I need to first of all uh, read the digital value of pin number 14 and at the same time I need to continue this statement so let me first of all copy this and paste it five more times and I guess sixth one okay so now we already have these six sensors so let me rename them properly so these are the sensors 14 15 16 17 18 and 19 so if digital read 14 is a zero means not digital read 14 and this must also be zero 14 15 must be zero digital read 16 and 17 must be one digital read 18 and 19 must be one so this is how you identify whether forward direction has been attained or not. So if this condition is attained, then what we are supposed to do, we are simply supposed to call 
called front which we already defined in our earlier video similarly based on these drawings i'm going to simply write a program for each of these junctions and apart from which we may have some special case like you may have some other pattern hidden in inside your image so you uh, you need to actually take care of, of all this uh, hidden what we call geometries of the maze and then uh, first of all identify what various uh, junctions your robot is going to about to hit and then uh, consider those things by uh, having a proper knowledge of placement of the sensor and your IR line sensor structure and then you are good to go with this kind of programming so that's all for this video in our next video i'll be directly showing you a small demo uh, of how the things happen in the back end Thank you.